This is KGW News at Noon. We start with breaking news this afternoon. Less than two hours ago, a MAX train hit a pedestrian near the Beaverton Transit Center. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue says the person who was hit was taken to a local trauma center. Thanks for joining us here at noon. I'm Drew Carney. TriMet also says the MAX blue and red lines were both shut down because of this. At this point, though, they are back open, although riders can still expect some delays while investigators work to figure out exactly what happened. Also this afternoon, we're following up on the deadly shooting that took place in a rural area of East Multnomah County on Wednesday. We can show you exactly where this happened. So the sheriff's office says that a man, a woman, and a dog were all found dead inside a home on Cottrell Road, southeast of Gresham. A few hours later, in Clackamas County, deputies tried to pull over a van for a traffic violation. They eventually caught up to that van and found the uh, driver dead inside. As KGW's Catherine Cook explains, investigators believe all three people involved knew each other. Just before 4 a.m. Wednesday, Multnomah County Sheriff's deputies responded to a shooting at a home on Southeast Cottrell Road near Carpenter Lane in Boring. There, investigators say they found a man, woman, and a dog all dead from gunshot wounds. For about two hours, neighbors were warned by reverse 911 to shelter in place as deputies launched their investigation. It's not a good thing. Pete Summers lives on Cottrell Road. He says his son does too, right next door to where the victims lived. I have met them several times, you know, because they were neighbors of my, my son. And they were nice people, you know, so I have no clue as to what might have happened. By 8 a.m., a break in the case in Clackamas. Sheriff's deputies there tried to pull over a white van for a traffic violation. Authorities say the driver refused, but eventually stopped near Southeast 131st Drive and Comanche Court. Then, deputies say they heard a gunshot inside the van. They later found the driver dead inside. Investigators say the man was involved in the early morning shooting and knew both victims. Back in Boring. You're always worried about your kids, you know. Pete is thankful his son is okay, and his heart is with the victims' families. Too bad that it happened. You know, I, from what I know, they were nice people. Catherine Cook, KGW News. A couple of more notes to Catherine's report. The sheriff's office says they won't share any more information on this case while the investigation continues. And they also say they won't release the names of the people involved until autopsies are complete. Meanwhile, in Troutdale, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is also investigating another shooting that left one woman hurt. Just after nine o'clock last night, deputies got a call about a shooting near a business on Southwest 257th Drive and Southeast Stark. That's where they say they found the woman and she was taken to the hospital because of her injuries. We've reached out to the sheriff's office for an update on her condition, but are still waiting for them to give us more details. Oregon City Police are asking for help to find this 13 year old boy. His name is Tyler Shoup. Police say he was seen last night at Clackamas Park around 1030. At that point, he took off on a scooter with another kid that's about his age. We're also told Tyler has a medical condition that requires medication. Police say he's roughly five foot six and was wearing a black sweatshirt with jeans and a black flat brimmed hat. Anyone with information about where he may be should contact the Oregon City Police. All right, let's turn our attention to Rodney Hills weather forecast. But first, Ron, that beautiful shot of Newport on this Thursday. Uh, this is the first day of winter, at least winter arrives in a few hours. But my goodness, yeah. that shot looks like it's uh, springtime out there. Yeah, but look at the one behind me, though. It, this is Cannon Beach behind me, so oh, it, it really depends on where you are. I mean, right next door, we've got very foggy locations to clear locations, and that kind of illustrates that. So in the fog at Cannon Beach, it's 47 degrees. Uh, Chris McGinnis rolled a time lapse on our Wells Fargo camera of the fog over the city early this morning. Look at that. We had winds in the gorge up until about 3 a.m. And then at Troutdale, those winds just faded. That allowed the fog to come in, al helped allow the fog to really become thick across a good chunk of the Willamette Valley. We can come back out live now. And we still have basically no wind out in East Multnomah County at all. This is uh, Stoller Family Vineyards Estate. The other winery cameras I've seen look the same, very cloudy, very foggy, especially, especially for the wineries that are up in elevation a little bit. This is down flat over the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club out in Aloha. What a mess. 
and then you get over the West Hills and you find this. So it's crazy out there right now. 45 in Portland. That temperature is out along the uh, Columbia River. It's 47 here in downtown. So areas with sunshine probably get up to around 50. But I still, with no wind, if you have fog and it's dense right now, you may not see the sun today. And if that's the case, you're probably looking at highs closer to about 43. We'll have your forecast, including tomorrow's mountain snow returning. That's coming up. Multnomah County says 315 people died while living on the street last year. 315 is the highest number ever recorded in a single year in the county. Nearly half of those deaths are considered unintentional. The majority of them from meth and fentanyl overdoses. County Chair Jessica Viga Peterson says that Multnomah County plans to declare a fentanyl emergency. We can and we must do better and that the circumstances that led someone to die on our watch must change. And I want you to know that our response is changing here in Multnomah County. Peterson went on to say the county plans to invest in new shelters, more outreach workers on the streets, and will also open up a new center to help people struggling with addiction. Community members across the country will gather today to remember people who have died while living on the street. Today is set aside as that day to remember because it's also winter solstice, making it the longest night of the year during what is typically the coldest time of year in many places. There are several local vigils happening tonight. We're going to show you two of them right here. There's one in Oregon City that starts at six o'clock and there's another in Vancouver starting at 545. The Secretary of State's office, meanwhile, released some of the findings from a new audit that was set up to take a look at the impact of Measure 110. That's the voter approved measure that legalized small amounts of drug possession in Oregon back in 2020. Here's KGW's Alma McCarty with more. Acknowledged as controversial from the start, officials say Measure 110 has attracted more scrutiny since voters passed it in 2020. The law was intended to fund new treatment services, but those were slow to roll out. And the decriminalization piece of the law began as the fentanyl epidemic exploded. For 22 for a month. Now the first of its kind measure faces proposed reforms, critics seeking to recriminalize possession. We spoke earlier this year with those who seek to fix Measure 110 and those who pushed to pass the measure in the first place. We're failing our communities right now. We've got people who are dying from overdoses. We've got children and teens who are exposed to drugs. And we have communities that are struggling with increased crime. This is an urgent issue where we have to help our Oregonians out and move us forward so we can promote people getting into treatment and recovery. We've already tested the idea if criminalization was the way to answer addiction. We have 50 years of proof that criminalization has only created a lot of harms. Amid this backdrop, a new audit takes a narrow look at grant funding for treatment and recovery services throughout the state. The Secretary of State cautioning that the report answers a series of questions from lawmakers and is not, quote, a measuring stick for the law. She says the audit will help the Oregon Health Authority put the right structures in place to administer the treatment side of Measure 110. So here's what auditors found. In general, community-based treatment and recovery services to help people struggling with addiction have grown under Measure 110 due to $260 million in grants from OHA. That money went to 233 network service providers, and officials expect to award another $150 million through June 2025. But the report points out ongoing challenges, too, from a slow rollout of grant money too low spending, meaning that in some, often rural counties, networks aren't providing all the required services to the people who need them. Those can range from harm reduction to peer support to housing and treatment. Auditors also found challenges in staffing, collecting data, and overseeing Measure 110. Recommendations from the report include OHA presenting the legislature with a plan to report Measure 110 outcome metrics, better report staffing, improve data collection, and identify gaps in care and barriers to service in each of Oregon's 36 counties. Alma McCarty, KGW News. A new bill is on President Biden's desk today. 
It aims to restore the right of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde to pursue land claims and compensation. A legislative mistake in 1994 inadvertently restricted those rights. This is just a wonderful event, a time in history where justice has prevailed. It is one of the most significant um, bills that have been passed concerning the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. Oregon Representative Andrea Salinas and Senator Jeff Merkley both pushed for this bill.